During Christmas of 1989, a Dutch programmer named Guido van Rossum decided to spend his holiday break working on a side project. He wanted to create a programming language that was simple, easy to read and fun to use. Something that removed the unnecessary complexity he saw in other programming languages. Inspired by his liking for the comedy group Monty Python Flying Circus, he named his creation Python. He had no idea what began as a holiday experiment would go on to become one of the most powerful and influential programming language in the world. Fast forward to today, we are living in the AI era and Python is the number one language powering the revolution. From building chatbots to training machine learning models, Python is a bridge between you and artificial intelligence. Which means that by learning Python now, you are not just preparing for the coding career, you are preparing for the future of technology itself. That's why in this guide, I'm going to take you step by step, starting from the absolute basic and gradually moving towards the advanced concept, frameworks and career ready skills. And by the end, you will not only know exactly what to learn and in what order, but also how to use Python in the AI era to build and grow. And finally, I will share how you can actually crack a job once you have completed this roadmap. So let's get started with the very first step of the simple roadmap, which is building a strong foundation in the basics. Every language has its alphabet and in Python, that alphabet is syntax. This is where you learn how code is structured, why indentation matters and how to run your very first program. Then come variable and data types. Variables are like containers where you store values, number, text or true for values. Understanding these concepts are essential as they form the foundation upon which all the programming logics are built. Next, you step into conditionals or decision making. This is a logic behind choices. For example, if it rains, take an umbrella, else wear sunglasses. Python uses if else statement for this logic. Now moving forward, you need to understand typecasting which refers to converting a value from one data type to another. For example, you can convert number into text, text into numbers or even float into integers. This becomes especially useful when working with user's input. Since data entered by the users is often in string format and need to be transformed into appropriate type before use. But what happens when something goes wrong in your code and error comes? That's where exceptions comes in. Using try and accept, you can prevent your program from crashing. And finally, you need to understand the core of programming that is functions. Functions are like reusable block of code, like a machine where you give input, it does some processing and gives you an output. For example, a function that takes two numbers and returns their sum. Function make your code cleaner, reusable and professional. A good project at this stage for practicing is building a basic calculator or a quiz game that will help you understand the concept of variables, conditionals, exceptions and function in one go. Now moving forward to a step to data structures and algorithms. Now that you can write basic program, you need to learn how to store and organize data efficiently. Start with understanding basic data structures like list, tuple and sets, which are like different type of containers that are used to store different type of values. For example, list can hold anything and can be modified. Tuples are fixed and unchangeable, while sets remove duplicates automatically. Next, you should understand dictionaries, which works in key and value pairs, just like a real dictionary, where you look up a word to get its meaning. While understanding dictionaries, you should also understand which data type can be used as keys and values. Next come loops, which let you repeat tasks without rewriting the code. For example, if you want to print number from 1 to 10, Instead of writing print statement 10 times, it can be done easily with a single line using loop. You will also have to understand different type of loops. For example, for loop and while loop and when to use which loop to make your program efficient. Once you are comfortable, step into classical data structures that are arrays, linked lists, stacks, queues and heap. These may sound difficult to understand, but they are just different ways of storing and retrieving the data. For example, a stack works like a pile of plate. You add from the top and you remove from the top. A queue works like a line in a supermarket, first in and first out. Then learn hash table for super fast lookups, binary search trees for structured storage and recursion which is when a function call itself again and again to solve a problem step by step. Finally, practice sorting algorithms like bubble sort, quick sort and merge sort. These sharpen your problem solving skills and are often asked in interviews. At this stage, try solving small coding problems on platforms like hack a rank or lead code or build a to-do list where your tasks are managed with list and dictionaries. Step 3. Advanced Python Features This is where Python really start to feel powerful. Modules let to organize your code into separate files, making it easier to manage and reuse across different projects. Whereas Lambda function are the small, anonymous function that can be written in a single line. 
perfect for simple tasks. Understanding this is important as you won't be writing the function all the time separately. There would be times you just want to use a function once and a single line. Moving forward to decorators, which allow you to add extra functionality to existing functions without modifying their code, a feature widely used in popular frameworks like Flask and Django. Next, we have iterators and generator, which help you process large amount of data without using too much of memory. After this, understand regular expression, which let you search patterns in text, like validating email or cleaning messy data. And there's a list comprehension also, a shorter way to write loops in one line. A project here could be a log file analyzer that uses regular expression to extract specific patterns from text files. Now let's move forward to our step 4 that is object oriented programming. When your project gets bigger, OOP become essential. In OOPs, you will come across classes and objects which let you model real world things in code. For example, a car class with properties like brand and speed and method like drive or break. So this was a basic example of class and method, but you need to understand how to create a class, when to use it and what are the object of the class. After understanding all this comes inheritance, which allow you to reuse the code across classes. Just imagine it like a function in Python. Also understand different type of inheritance and when to use which one is the most important part. After inheritance, the next key concept in OOPS is polymorphism which let you use the same function in different ways depending on the context. Then come dunder methods like init or str, which define how your object behave and interact. Mastering OOPS concept like these makes your code scalable, modular and professional. A practical project to apply these ideas is building a bank account management system, where each account is an object with methods of deposit, withdrawal and balance check. Now our next step is step 5 common packages and environment. Now you are ready to move beyond Python built-in features and use external libraries. Start with PIP, which help you install packages from PYPI, that is Python Package Index, where thousands of ready-made libraries are available. You can also use Conda for data science setup and Poetry for managing project dependencies. These tools let you work with powerful libraries like NumPy for math, Pandas for data, Flask for web apps and TensorFlow for AI. After understanding packages, learn about environment and configuration. Professional developer never code in global setup because one project package can interfere with another. Instead, they create isolated environment using tools like virtual environment, pip environment or py environment. You will also come across pyproject.toml, a file used to manage dependencies in modern Python projects. After understanding the environment and configuration, let's move to our next step that is concurrency and framework. Now Python isn't just about writing correct code, it's also about writing efficient code. But here's the twist, Python has something called Global Interpreter Log GIL, which means only one thread can run Python code at a time. To work around this, you need threading, multiprocessing and async programming. Async await in particular is used heavily in modern framework like fast API to handle thousands of requests at once. Once you understand how to make a Python code run efficiently, you are ready to move from core concept to building real world application. At this stage, you can start applying your Python knowledge to actual project. And for this, you should understand frameworks. That is our step, learn a framework. If you are into web development, learn Django or Flask. Django is like a full package. It gives you everything from authentication to databases. Flask is lighter and gives you more flexibility. If you want modern high performance APIs, go with Fast API. If dashboard excites you, Try Plotly Dash and for asynchronous system, explore frameworks like Tornado and Sanic. At this stage, you can build projects like a blog application, an API backend for a mobile app or a dashboard that tracks stock prices. Once you are comfortable building projects with framework, the next focus is making your code clean, maintainable and less error prone. That brings us to the next step, testing and DevOps. The final stage is making sure your code runs reliably. Python comes with testing frameworks like unit test, pi test, nose, and doc test. These help you write tests that conform your code behave as expected. Tools like Tox automate testing across environments, making your code more efficient. This is also where you touch on DevOps, practice deploying, monitoring, and scaling your Python project. And that completes our Python roadmap for beginners. But before ending this video, let's revisit to the question we discussed in the beginning and let's answer them. First, how can you use AI with Python to build and grow? Python is the language behind AI. Libraries like TensorFlow, PyTorch and Scikit-learn allow you to train your model. 
With Python, you can build chatbot recommendation system, image recognition app, or even automate tasks using AI APIs. And here's the best part. Even if you don't become a data scientist, Python allows you to integrate AI models into your web apps, mobile apps, or workflow, making you future-proof in this AI-driven world. Second, how can you crack a job after completing this roadmap? The key is building a portfolio. Don't just say you know Python, create a project like a web app in Django, a data dashboard with Pandas and Matplotlib, or an AI chatbot using an API. Putting this project on GitHub, write a short post on LinkedIn about what you learned and if possible, record a short demo video explaining your project. Pair this with one or two certifications and you will have a proof of both skills and initiative. Employers don't just want coders, they want problem solvers who can demonstrate real-world impact. Follow this roadmap step by step, stay consistent and within a year, you will have both skills and credibility to land your first Python job. And from there, you can grow into AI, web development, data science or any path you choose. So that's all from my side in this video. Thank you and I will see you in the next one.